Hello, this is Dr. Jorge Santiago Bly in Horticultural Science Hort 101. What are we going to do today? I'm so excited. We're going to do this in the greenhouse and then you'll take it home. What are those things? Let's pan at these beautiful big containers. How are these called? Hyper Tufa. Now I'm going to go around our team videographer and show one of the big advantages of hyper tufa pots that's a big container right look and i don't have big muscles very easy look at that very very easy if i can do it anyone can do it now tufa is a naturally occurring stone but it's not very common there was a craze amongst gardeners so the story goes in England in the early 19th century. So everybody was looking for the lightweight, authentic, naturally occurring tufa stone for gardening. And then of course it became not very common, it became uncommon. And so there was a guy who got Portland cement and some other materials that we'll show you in a second and created something better than tufa, hyper tufa. And that's what we're gonna make. All right, so I have my little cheat sheet and we are gonna make hyper tufa. Hyper tufa pots or containers. Now, what do we have here? Portland cement um, and we have perlite, peat moss and we recommend um, core, C-O-I-R which is made out of coconut, but we have so many um, on campus that we just use it. It is very old, but it just works. And we have um, nylon fibers here. And presumably they make the actual pot less likely to break. And optionally, and we will try this for the first time, we have uh, liquid dye for cement. Okay, so let's follow the cheat sheet, the recipe one unit by volume of cement, one and a half perlite, three quarters by eyeball of peat, or we recommend um, uh, corn, and just a sprinkle of fibers. Are we ready? And at the end, we are, we are going to mix all of this and add water. So here we go, one of cement, the down it goes. Perlite is super lightweight, I can, you know, <laughs> with one finger. Here is one, ooh, I forgot something. I recommend using a mask if you're inside. But here we are outside, so I am not using it. Okay, here we go, one and a half, three quarters of feet, we recommend choir, um, core, excuse me, once more, and some sprinkles of fibers. Allegedly, I think that's enough. And now we mix and mix and mix. Know that I am using gloves, or though I should have been using more uh, I mean, nicer gloves. These are, you know, beaten up. I think this is fairly well mixed my recipe and now we cannot just use this right we need to add a very important ingredient H2O water how much I'm gonna say al dente just like pasta until we uh, we feel is not too solid not too liquid I have the impression we need to add a little bit more. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. May have added a little bit too much, but let's see what happens. And I am very much tempted. Let's see. I think it's a little bit 
getting there, it's getting there. Getting there. I am not an expert cook. I I can cook macaroni and cheese, but <laughs> always in a hurry. But if I dedicate time, it's a little bit on the liquid side of the spectrum. Okay, after uh, massaging this a little bit and adding some uh, cement dye, we are ready to pour this. Okay, so there are two ways. We can put this mix on a mold and because we have so much created we are going to also use um, kind of like being in the beach and making a sand castle that's what we're going to do as well so here we go begin putting some material at the base I think we are going to win a Nobel Prize looks like like this looks a little bit reddish it's because we put a splash of the of the cement dye. This is actually the first time that uh, we use this cement dye. We want to fill it in nicely and not forget that at the very end we want to poke holes to have this container drain. I wanted to um, I wanted to find uh, yellow and green and blue cement dye but I only found red and it doesn't look so pretty but uh, heavens no at the end it may look nice you know that horticulture is a science but there is a lot of trial and error in this science and making these pots is one of those okay and we'll just around these edges nicely I'm sure all of these videos will be in the competition for an Oscar in the near future. I think that the walls are a tiny, a tiny bit heavier than I want. I mean, thicker than I want, but I think we'll be okay. I like not to be uniformly red, but with some, some uh, variegation. I'm going to poke some holes here with my fingers since forgot oh that's not bad at all here is another hole and I think that will be more than enough okay let's try the other one and for this one we're gonna flip this let's hope we'll be okay and ooh, beautiful let me finish this very well now we are gonna begin on the sides first mix is getting a little wet I mean a little dry so we may want to use this bottle with water pretty soon but I think we're gonna be okay okay And not exactly the Mona Lisa today, but we are getting there. Let's make this a little bit wetter. Okay, here we go. Now that the red is not uniformly first and I think with this you have an idea what is that we have to do so in the next video or maybe I should say this right now we have to wait at least 24 hours until it begins to dry a little bit and we will cover this soon let me try to and we'll we'll finish this in a little bit and of course I don't have enough enough uh, mix right okay 
So after a little bit of a battle with the molds where we took some from Peter and gave it to Paul, <laughs> uh, we are done. They don't look too bad. It looks like the color of, you know, color of brick. So now we need to put these inside of a bag, kind of like a little plan to keep the humidity or, or, or in a greenhouse. And so we go, and here are the holes made with my finger and that baby gets to the crib right now here and then this one gets to be covered like a baby for about 24 hours and then this is what will happen after 24 hours we remove the bags from the from the drying molds here okay so i am no longer that messy our esteemed videographer uh, stopped me from the messiness and uh, all we have to do after 24 hours is to Take this off the bag, which I will not do now, and gently remove the mold from the container or the container from the from the mold, the hyper tufa container from the mold. Here on the other one, we will gently emphasize on gently flip this, remove the sand, and then in both cases put the hyper tufa pots right back into their bags for how long four to six weeks until they dry and then something wonderful happens after that time elapses and hello so imagine that four to six weeks have elapsed this is so lightweight all of the water has evaporated super super lightweight i could i can hold this with one finger if i wish and so what do we do here here is one that we didn't paint any color, just the Portland cement. With the holes, we get some uh, 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 screen mesh used to repair the screen. Put that there to cover the holes. And then we can do a million things. We can, well, first of all, put some, you know, some dirt, some dirt that will become soil appropriate to the plants. So this is regular potting soil. These are sockle and so it, they may need uh, a little bit more sandy soil. We just remove them from the containers, put them here, add more soil, make it look beautiful. This is art now. This is no longer hort you know, horticultural science. We can decorate this, do whatever you want, have fun, make it look beautiful. And then, you will have something as beautiful as some of the pots we show at the beginning of this video. Have fun, practice. You know that some of your pots may, you know, break, but that's life. Just move on and you will do beautiful work and have a lot of fun. Thank you and see each other in the next video. Thank you.